privilege every time I stand up here to, to bring the word for me and Pastor Mylene and definitely all the pastors in the house. We are privileged that we can bring the word to you. And we're talking along the lines of transform mind. What's on your mind? You know, thinking like Jesus thinks. It is so important that we understand that God's desires that we be transformed. And the transformation of God does not happen from outside in. It happens from within and then changes us. If you want to be transformed, truly, truly transformed, it must happen from within. You might have a great experience, but that great experience, if, this, if it does not affect you within, it's not going to last. It's not going to last. But if someone, you know, for example, gives you a, 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 you know, a gift and that gesture of, of that person giving has affected you, it will transform the way you see that person. It will transform your life. Amen? And so God's desire is that we be transformed. So in the next couple of minutes, I pray that you catch what the Holy Spirit is saying. I believe there's an urgency for us, amen, to really come into a place of understanding what's happening every Sunday, every time you have an encounter with the Lord. It starts with, you know, us transforming. God's desiring is that we tra be transformed in our mind. Let me start with this. If you need a title, the title of the message is The Transformed Mind. What does it mean that we have a transformed mind? What, is, what does it look like that you live differently? A while ago, we, we prayed, God, transform us. Leave me, leave me astounded. How many of you really want that? That is a prayer that will definitely change you, all right? So let me start with, with this. Wisdom comes when we understand that our time is limited. Let me say that again. Wisdom comes when we understand that our time is limited. When you know your time here on earth is limited, then you are going to walk and desire to walk in purpose, with purpose, with simplicity. It will help you make the right choices because you know you are here, you are alive for a purpose. Every young people in this room, as you are beginning to venture into the world, beginning to look at, the, you know, what's next for you, you have a purpose. Every person, every adult, every, every uh, you know, chill, child, you know, in Sunday school right now, all of them, little legends, all of them have a purpose. Everyone has a purpose. You are here for a purpose, and that is why it is important for us to live with intentionality, and with urgency, because if you want to see and you know, if you want to know the purpose of God, you know, you need to know His heart. You need to know His heart. You need to know how He thinks because He's the giver of purpose. Can someone say amen? amen? He's the giver of purpose. You are not just something, you know, you're not just here for the sake of being here. Every person in this room has a purpose. That is why Colossians 3, 1 to 4 tells us, since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven. Set your sights on the realities of heaven where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of the earth. A transformed mind understands that he is living on the earth with the purposes of heaven. You are here with the purposes of heaven. What is the will of God? The will of God is simple. On earth as it is in heaven. The will of God is simple. On earth as it is in heaven. The will of God is simple. On earth as it is in heaven. I want to address everybody. because The will of God is simple. On earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Siguro balcony, will, you'll say a louder amen. Amen. <laughs> the will of God is simple on earth as it is in heaven. Okay, you're closer to heaven. That's why you're hearing from heaven. No, no, no. No, my point here is really that we understand that there is a purpose why we are in Christ. We are alive because of Him. That's why Bible says, think about the things of heaven, not the things of the earth. 
right? And when you talk about the things of the earth, it is the mindset, the attitude, the culture of the world that is separate from how God thinks, that is opposite the way God thinks. And it's God's desire that He's saying to us that we have a choice and His desire is that we think the way He thinks. We can't allow our minds to wander because if we wander, you know, with our minds, then the unrenewed mind, the default will always be how the world will think. The world thinks self. The world thinks about no hope. The world thinks differently, as you can see. Even the Bible says man thinks apart from God, how man thinks is so corrupt. They're just thinking about themselves. But when you begin to understand that you are in Christ, you think differently. You desire not just for yourself, you desire for other people now. A while ago in the first service, we prayed for the government. We prayed for the people in government. Among you know that our government officials need the prayer. They, they need prayer. I pray that they walk and understand that they are elected for a reason. I pray that, that they will understand that they were elected for a reason, that they live with purpose, that they live knowing that they, you know, there is eternity. So they're not going to amass things up for themselves, but for, you know, understanding that they are there for a reason and for a purpose. Amen. And then verse 3, for you die to this life and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. That's the reason why we have access to the things of heaven. Because heaven lives inside of me. Heaven's, heaven lives inside of us. Bible says that we have the mind of Christ. Everybody say that. One, two, three. I have the mind of Christ. Wow, that's huge. What does that mean? It means that you have the thoughts and purposes of God. The mind of God. That means we have access to the thoughts and purposes of God. So living and setting your sights on the things above, that means you live your life with the thoughts and purposes of God. His desire, the way God sees the people, the way God sees life here on earth, the way God sees your, what you have in your lives, the provision that you have, the life, the, the life that you, you have. There, everything has a purpose. We are in Christ. You are a new creation. And so the old has gone and the new has come. So we think like new creation people. We think like people who have new life, which we are. We have. And then look at verse 4. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all this glory. Let me say this. Reason why we need to think of heaven because is because Jesus is coming soon. Do you believe that? Do you know that? He is coming soon with every signs that we have right now. Jesus is coming soon. Amen. And so it's beautiful and so imperative that we live our lives according to the purposes of heaven. Amen. In our everyday, how are we living? Imagine this, if you think and believe that you are a child of God, how is that going to impact your life? How is that going to impact your life if you believe that you are a child of God? Anyone believe that you are a child of God? They are a child of God. Come on, how is that impacting your life? How is that impacting the people around you? Because if you believe in what you believe, it must change the way you live. We come here, we declare what we believe. It must change the way you live. What you believe does not stay here. You bring it home. It must affect our lives. It's not just about quoting Bible verses or singing songs. Even the devil can quote Bible verses. But my question is, are these Bible verses transforming the way we think? Is it changing the way we think? It's changing the way we live. If I am a husband, all right, I am a husband, is it changing the way I live, you know, towards my wife? 
how I treat my wife, and vice versa. Is it changing the way I see my children? Is it changing and empowering me with regards to the habits of sin? Because we desire the things of God. Life is short. Amen. Life is short. And He has a purpose why God brought us here. In every encounter that we have here, every, every time you come to church, I'm glad you're here in church. Every time you come here, is it changing the way you think? Every time you have a life group, our staff, is it changing the way you think? I'm intense because I'm, uh, there's urgency. So staff, is it changing the way we think? I'm on staff. Is it transforming me or is it just a job? Right? Really? So we come here, every life group, every ministry, every serving. Is it changing the way I am thinking? Because every encounter with God is positioned to transform you. Don't take that. Take that. You know, take note of that. Every encounter with God, every time you come in His presence, it is meant to transform you. It is meant to transform us. Today, there is a purpose. God's desire is that you be transformed. We take something from the Lord. He gives us something. There is freedom in this place to receive. In whatever level you are in, He brings the Word. The Holy Spirit is moving through worship. And it's meant to transform. Every time you come here, there is a transformation that happens. You leave not the same way you came in. You are different because there is a supernatural meeting that happens when you now have an encounter with the Lord. Come on. And that's why Romans 12, 2 in the New Living Translation says this. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. But let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. We're not meant to copy. We are. God's desire is that we be transformed in the way we think. Come on. Then you will learn to know God's will for you. That's always a question for many people. What is the will of God for me? And that is a good place to start. But the way for you to know the will of God in your daily and in your long term is you get to know the heart of God. You get to know His mind. You get to know His heart. And where do you find that? In His Word. And it says here, you will learn to know God's will for you which is good, pleasing, and perfect. That is the will of God. My goodness. You know why we are declaring all these words, all, all these songs? Because we know. Why are we praying for the move of God? Because we know. We know the will of God. Because the Holy Spirit took His Word and made it, made it alive inside of us. So there is a transformation. The only way you will know the will of God is that you be transformed in your mind. Let me say that again. There is no will of God that you will know. You will not know the will of God if you don't come into a place of transformation. Then and only then, you open up yourself for God to really speak to you. Just like a while ago, we were praying, we were seeking God. And mind you, Romans 12, 2, it starts with, you know, come, what comes before Romans 12, 2 is Romans 12, 1. That talks about offering your what? Bodies as a living sacrifice, set apart as a living sacrifice, holy and well-pleasing to God, which is your intelligent, logical worship based on the mercies of God. We see the mercies of God, and because of the mercy of God, I come into a place which is reasonable, which is logical, duh. When I see the goodness of God, my Real response, my true response, my proper response is, here I am to worship. And when you are in this place of worship, what happens is, you now invite God to transform your mind. So we are now being transformed when we have encounters with God. When we have words coming into our hearts and allowing that word to be written in our hearts. 
In another translation, it says, stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you. Don't be squeezed into the mold of this present age, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation in the way you think. And then and only then, you will empower, you will be empowered to discern God's will for you, a beautiful life. Everybody say a beautiful life. The will of God is that we have a beautiful life. Amen. A satisfying and perfect in His eyes. We live our lives according to His heart. And His heart for us is good. Romans 12, 2, Amplified. So I'm, I'm in unpacking actually this verse. In the Amplified, it says, Do not be conformed to this world. The word conform. Everybody say conform. If you look at the original Greek of this word, it means the act of an individual assuming an outward expression that does not come from within. Again, an act of the, of the person assuming an outward expression that is not real to who he is. Who are you? I'm a child of God. And so I think differently than the way a person thinks that is not in Christ. A slave thinks differently, you know, than a, a child of God. A slave comes to God with no confidence, but you are a child of God. You have relationship with God, so you come to God with confidence. Come boldly to the throne room of grace. Sometimes we still operate thinking like we were slaves, but actually you are now a son. You're a child of God. And if you know God as your true father, your father, then you will know God the father who is perfect in all his ways will never leave you nor forsake you. He's always going to be there for you. Amen. So Paul is exhorting us, stop assuming an outward expression or stop masquerading in the clothing of this world, this mannerism, speech, style, habits, the way of thinking. Do not be conformed any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be transformed. Everybody say transform. And progressively change as you mature. That word transform is, it means a complete change of physical form of substance. The word means, it speaks of an act of a person changing his outward expression from that which he has a different one. So it means that there is a transformation happening from within according to who that person is. A new person. So be transformed. Everybody say transform. And progressively change as you mature spiritually. So God's desire is that we be transformed. And we know this. It's not just a one-time transformation. It is a daily transformation. Amen. You were saved in your spirit, and you are being saved in your mind and in your soul. That's why there is a renewing of your mind. Amen. And among you know, your mind, how you think is powerful. It will affect your body. Science proves, proves that, right? And so there is a transformation from within. And then the Bible continues to, to say, by the renewing of your mind, Focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove for yourself what the will of God is. That which is good, acceptable, perfect in His plan and purpose for you. So He's saying by the renewing of your mind. What, you change the way you think. So you focus on God. You focus on His promises. You focus on His goodness, His character, what He has done for you. And that is going to transform and progressively change you and make you a mature spiritual being. Amen? So his desire is that we have a transformed mind because it always leads into a transformed life. What does that mean, that we have a transformed mind? You know, let me give you some things about being a, having a transformed mind. Number one, or before that, is this really my time? It's okay. I was so surprised that that is my time. But then again, how do you transform your mind? God gives us practicalities. He tells us, you know, how to do that. 
Number one, and I now do it since the time I'm, I shared that message a couple of weeks ago on what's on your mind. I always ask the Holy Spirit, what's on your mind, God? What's on your mind, God? Now, let's practice this. Do you have a situation in your life? Do you have a problem? You need the move of God. Now, ask the Holy Spirit. Ask Jesus. Jesus, what is on your mind with regards to this problem? Ask Him right now. Jesus, what is on your mind with regards to this problem? Do you know right now God is speaking to many, if not to all? And He's saying, all is well. Just wait. I will see, you will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. He's saying to some of you, I am your shepherd, you shall not lack. He's saying to you, I am your healer. I'm Jehovah Rapha. He's saying to you, peace, my son, peace, my daughter. So why not every day you begin to ask, every moment, opportunities, you begin to ask, Lord, what are you thinking? Mylene and I, we have a, a situation right now, you know, with regards to my mother. Lord, I always ask, Lord, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? And you know what? God continues to confirm things in my heart with regards to the present situation that I have. The Holy Spirit will speak to us. Amen. This is leading me to transform my mind. This is leading us to transform your mind. So later, Lord, what are you thinking? With regards to me, with my future, what are you thinking, Lord? You, are, you have a renewed mind. In God, God can speak to you. Amen. So let's start by asking, Lord, what are you thinking? Second thing that we can do as we allow God to transform our minds is we meditate on His Word. Powerful. We know this. But then again, the question is, what are we meditating on? Sometimes we have this tunnel, tunnel vision because we're always meditating on the problem rather than beginning to look at what God thinks about the problem. Let's begin to think about what God thinks with regards to us, with, with regards to the problem. Rather than thinking what we think, let's think what He thinks. And then begin to meditate on, on His love, on His plan, on how He wants us to overcome this problem. Are you with me? Begin to meditate on His promises for you. Do you know to meditate is to review and picture the Word with the intention to do it. So you review and you picture God's Word with the intention to do it. Science tells us that the brain cannot respond to anxiety and gratitude at the same time. Cannot. Try right now. Worry and gratitude at the same time. Medical science tells us that when we allow and allowing our negative thoughts, our toxic thoughts and feelings, and allowing pessimism to take over our minds, it is incredibly damaging the brain. Every thought you have changes the structure of your mind. That's why. If we were constantly having negative thoughts, we build these thoughts into our brain which affects our future thoughts. And when we af be affected in our future thoughts, then it will affect our words and even our behavior. So the way you respond to a situation is always negative because you're always thinking that. This is what medical science tells us. I'm reading a medical journal here. It says, indeed, the study has shown how meditation on negative thoughts is one of the greatest predictors of depression and anxiety. That's why there's a lot of people depressed and anxious about many things because they're allowing themselves to be, you know, in a place of being bombarded with negative things based on past, based on what they see, based on where they're at. A cynical mindset always tends to stop from seeking, helping, or trusting others to help us, which can isolate us and further impact our mental and physical well-being. So it isolates you, and it will even affect you 
in the future because you don't want help. You can't trust anybody because you're cynical. That's a toxic mindset. But imagine a person understands the power of the mind and begins to think gratitude, begins to think thankfulness, begins to trust God. What do you think will happen? It will transform the mind and the person, right? A study shows the effects of gratitude on a behavior and looked at the response in the brain to the mind, uh, to the mind uh, found that subjects who participated in gratitude letter writing exercise, journaling, you know, writing things. Lord, I thank you for sunshine. Lord, I thank you for my wife. My wife writes, thank you for my husband. Lord, I thank you for this. I thank you for that. You know, one way while I was going to, I, was, I remember I was going to St. Luke's. I was just thanking the Lord rather than thinking about the problem. Think, thanking the Lord. Lord, thank you for this. Thank you for this. Amazing what happens in the brain activity, in the front of your brain that even will affect you three months later. Affect your mood. Affect your, your perspective. You know, guys, this is free. You don't need to go to a psychiatrist to tell you all these things. It's written already. Or you can go to a psychiatrist if you like. But I'm saying it, it is given. Another research on the effect of gratitude has on our biology shows how being thankful can increase our longevity, our ability to use our imagination and our ability to problem solve. Come on, everybody. This is proven by medical science that gratitude really affects us. That's why Philippians tells us whatever is lovely, whatever is pure, whatever is Good, good. Think about these things. Remember what God has done. Remember what He has done. Do you know how you remember what God has done? God gives you a fresh lens how to approach your present and even your future. So when you think about what the Lord has done in the past, you now begin to have a fresh lens on how you approach this problem in front of you right now. You think about history, how God has been good to you. Now, when a problem arises, you now have the empowerment to say, God did it before. I have now the empowerment. I've experienced God before. I know I will see God also in this present challenge. So He gives you a fresh lens. It begins to give you a fresh seeing. And you can even sing, I can see clearly now. The rain has gone. It's going to be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. Right? Now, before you were so, oh no, you know, I don't want to live anymore and all of these things. But because you remember what the Lord has done, God encountered you in the past. Now you have a fresh lens. You have now a new seeing. That now you have hope. And now you have you know, future that you are the excited on. Amen? That's why it's so important that you see your problems and trials as a place, an invitation to build new super highways to better thinking. How do you see your problem right now? Is It is a place, you know, for us to practice what we're hearing here. Because anyone believe that what you're hearing here is powerful? Really? Because I know. Because you're not going to come here if you don't believe. You're not going to, you know, go through the motion on a Sunday to come here. Because you know, if you do not know, that what you're receiving here is powerful. My question is, is this what you're hearing affecting us? And... When problem arises, we apply what we're hearing. So see it as a perspective. That's why James tells us that when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it as an opportunity for great joy. <laughs> May problema ka na, great joy pa. Diba? But then again, now we see, oh no, I know how God moved in the past. I know God will move here. 
right? And now I am renewing my mind. I'm not saying you're automatic. You know, I'm not saying that you're automatic. No, God will take care of me. I had moments wherein I doubted. I had moments wherein I needed to arrest myself. I needed to find my handle. There was a dear brother who went on home to be with the Lord. When I saw it first thing in the morning, I needed to find my handle. That's why handle, who is your handle, is so important. And understand, Lord, thank you. You have a plan. You have a purpose. So it's a time wherein you allow yourself to see the situation and begin to walk in, the, in that situation according to how God wants you to walk. You are forming a new default. What is that? God's thoughts, God's will, and God's purposes. Amen? So what are you meditating on? What are the things that you are allowing yourself? I'm not against entertainment. I love entertainment. But if your entertainment takes most of your time than you having a time with God, then you need to shift a little bit. Adjust a little bit. And when you have renewed mind, you know what will happen? You will see even movies. That movies that are not really Christian will speak to you. Just like Lion King. Remember who you are, Simba. Oh, Lord, I will remember who I am. I'm a child of God. Like, you know, um, what's this? Little Mermaid. A whole new world. Ay, yung ba yun? Ah, no, I'm sorry, sorry. Matagal na kasi. Aladdin pala yun. <laughs> Oy, I'm checking if you're awake, huh? You see, my daughter is already 22, kaya siguro last papi or whoever, like uh, Cox. To... Anyways. Maling, ano, maling. But anyways, so what is God telling us here in the moment that we have here in the 30 seconds that I have? Let me give you some things with a renewed mind. When you have a transformed mind, you will live in hope. You will always live in hope. Regardless of what happens, there will be hope. That means any thought in your mind that does not inspire hope is a lie. So if there's something that comes to your mind that does not carry hope, no, it's a lie. Because I live in hope. I know God will take care of me. I know I have a bright future. Amen. Also, another thing is when you have a transformed mind, the impossible seems reasonable. It means nothing is impossible because God for God, nothing is impossible. So when you see an impossible situation, God, I know nothing is impossible with you. And when you see an impossible situation, you expect God to do a miracle. Because your mind is transformed. You've seen how God moved in the past. Now God's desire is that you continue along that path. You know, there was a story in Mark 8. I want you to see this. As I wind down, Mark 8, it says here in verse 14, verse 13, And he left, left them, got into the boat again, and went to the other side. Verse 14, Now they had forgotten to bring bread, and they had only one loaf with them in the boat. Verse 15, And he cautioned them, saying, Watch out, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. Now the leaven speaks of influence, right? Just like a yeast or leaven, you know, affects the whole dough. You know, the leaven of the Pharisees, the way a religious mindset will affect you. If you will allow the leaven of Herod, which speaks of the political, worldly mindset, it will affect you. So he says, watch out, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. But leaven, you associate it with bread. Now we look at verse 16, and they began discussing with one another the fact that they had no bread. And Jesus, aware of this, said to them, why are you discussing the fact that you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Having eyes, do you not see? And having ears, do you not hear? And do you not remember? What is God telling them? He's telling them and teaching them to transform their minds. And look at verse 19. When I broke the five loaves for the 5,000, how many basketful of broken pieces did you take up? They said to him, 12. 
And the seven for the 4,000, how many baskets full of broken uh, pieces did you take up? And they said to him, seven. And he said to them, do you not yet understand? Oh, no, you had an encounter with God in the past. Really a miracle from God. All of us. And then when we're faced with a scenario or a circumstance or a problem right now, we tend to worry again. Ako ganon. Siguro ako lang, no? I tend to worry again. Oh my goodness, ako hukunin yan. Oh my goodness, Lord. But then again, God is saying, Giselle, why are you discussing the fact that you have no bread? Why is my thinking always negative? Propensity to always lack. Why are you always discussing of lack? Giselle, do you not yet perceive your, or understand? Are your, are, is your heart hardened? Having eyes, you do not see. And having ears, do you not hear? And do you not remember? Do you not remember what I did before when I provided for your son's tuition fee? When, you, when I provided for your wedding, Mylene and I, when I, you, and I supernaturally provided for your new van. That was years ago. And then when I faced with a problem right now, I tend to worry again. But God is saying, no, 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 no. But God is gracious. He's going to say, remember what I did before? Because every encounter with God, remember I told you a while ago, every encounter with God is going to position you to have fresh lens. Because now every encounter must renew your mind. It must change the way you think. Recall what the Lord has done for you. It is powerful what God is wanting to do to us as we come into a place of just allowing God to renew our minds. I have a, this illustration. I hope this helps us as we end. Can I have the illustration to come? The props that I have. So his desire is that we think like he thinks. And what's happening with every encounter that we have right now, even right this very moment, God is renewing our minds. I pray that you will be so aware of what God is doing. Because He desires for us to really come to a place of a transformed mind. Amen? So for example, this is your mind. This is your mind. And the ping pong balls here represents fear, represents worry, anxious thoughts, represents, you know, depress, uh, depressed, uh, depression, any, anything that really transforms your mind towards the negative. What happens is, as you come into a place and get to know God and His Word, the Bible says that the Word of God is like water. Ephesians tells us that we are being watered in His... We're, we're being watered in our minds. God is watering our minds. So what happens is, as you come to the Word, God transforms us, and God now begins to take all those those thoughts away, help me here, thoughts away, and more and more as I meditate on His promises, meditate on His Word, look at this, there are lingering thoughts there, but you allow the Word of God to transform you. <laughs> Wala nang tubig eh. Dapat palaging may word and the Holy Spirit. Amen? And so we allow God's word to transform us. But what happens in the process, the word comes and gives us revelation. We are love. We are perfected in God. God is taking care of the situation. There is peace. There is hope. There is joy. Amen. There is provision. All right. 12. Number 12. Right. Speaks of completeness. Number one. You're number one in God. Divine order. Number eight. The new beginning. God is going to give you new beginnings. Amen. Number seven. Bingo. All right. So number seven talks about completeness in Christ. 
So whatever happens, look at this. Thoughts will try to come in again. Worry will try to come in again. It's a path for purposes of, ano. you know, depression will try to come in again. I, <laughs> the whole, diba, ubos na yung tubig. We need more of the water of God's Word. But you get my point. This is what happens to us. And what's on your mind is, are these, the truths of God. Frequent this place. Come to a place of receiving. Amen. Take time to meditate. Ask the Holy Spirit, what's on your mind, God? And sooner or later, you're going to see your default, your mind, your default, the way you think will be full of God's Word. It will be full of God's thoughts and promises. I speak that to you. I speak that to every individual in this place. I speak that to every young people in this room. I pray that, that we will come into a place that we know now know, regardless of what happened, there might be shaking around, but my mind is going to be secure. Bible says in, in, in Isaiah, those who put their trust, perfect peace will come to those who put their hearts, their minds to the Lord. Amen. Perfect peace comes because we trust in Him. Amen. Your mind is stayed on Him. Isaiah 26. Come on, lift your hands, everybody. Father, we lift our hands to you. We say, God, thank you. You love us. You desire that we walk in your purposes. You desire that we walk in the, in the plans that you have for us. And we, we know that we will never be able to walk in those things if we do not allow ourselves to be renewed in our minds. So thank you, Lord God, for people that are wise in this place, online, on site that we will hear your word, that we will frequent your word, that we will be intentional in allowing your word, Holy Spirit, to speak to us, helping us to understand more of you, who you are, what you've done, and who we are in you. Thank you, Lord God, for the transformation that's happening in every individual in this place, thus affecting families, thus affecting businesses, that's affecting the community and even the Philippines. That's affecting the world. That we will truly see your heart's desire, your prayer, God, on, on earth as it is in heaven. That we will see your glory. That we will see your provision. That we will see lives transform. We will see the kingdom, Lord God, going and being, impacting the people around. Lord, as we lift our hands, we say, God, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us. And thank you, Lord God, for transforming our minds even today. We honor you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, let's give praise to the Lord.